my turn now. Hi, everyone. So this is it. End of the road. So we have some important business to do in a few minutes, which is to do the course evaluations. But we have some fun stuff to do first. So what I like to do today is kind of look back on what happened this semester and kind of remind you guys how much you've accomplished and how far you've come. Um, and one of the ways I like to do this is I spend a lot of yesterday kind of going through a lot of the data we've collected through this semester and, and pulling some aggregate numbers. So I promise you that all the numbers on these slides are real um, down to the last decimal point. We don't make these up. Uh, they're actually pulled from, you know, logs that we keep of what you guys have done. Um, all right, so let's start with the people that were involved in the class. So, um, you know, I couldn't have done it this semester without Ben. That's not a, not an exaggeration, so maybe a round of applause for, for Ben. Um, the amount that he did, I mean, you guys saw a lot of what he did, but you also didn't see a lot of what he did. A lot of what he did was behind the scenes in terms of working on different pieces of the course infrastructure, developing the machine project and stuff like that. So, and, you know, for some, for some personal reasons, I really needed the help this semester. So I was really appreciative that he was there. Um, we had a fantastic uh, group of TAs uh, this semester, so they're busily working on grading your, your final projects. Um, the office hour captains, I think you guys had a lot of interaction with them, and we had some fantastic uh, people among that group. So, um, and then really, you know, the entire course staff, right? All the course assistants that helped you guys through office hours, um, when it got busy, when you got stressed, who provided a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of support when you needed it. Um, and then, you know, we had also had students working behind the scenes on stuff that you're not necessarily going to see now, although I might see a little bit of it today, actually, um, but things that are going to help improve the class in the future. All right. And then, of course, one of the things that, that we encourage and we actually are going to recognize in a few minutes is the help and support that you guys have provided each other. Um, so it's always really exciting and fun to see people emerge on the forum who are there to provide help. That's, you know, that's where Ben came from, that's where Daniel came from, that's where Rima came from. I mean, they, you know, they were vocal when they took the class about helping other people and sharing their knowledge, and now they're, they're on course staff. All right, so let's talk about you guys and, and, and how much work you put into this. So um, we had 41 meetings this semester, it's not including today. Um, the playlist of music has 33 songs on it. Um, uh, there we, you guys viewed it, oh, if, if only this number was 1024, then I would really feel like something in the universe liked me, but it was close. Um, you know, uh, there were 18,000 class attendance units combined throughout the entire semester. Um, you guys made use of the videos we post on YouTube, so I was happy to hear that. Those got viewed pretty widely. Um, the slide decks themselves got viewed about 5 million times. So these are some of my favorite stats uh, of the semester. So there is a student enrolled in this class. Maybe they're here today. Maybe they came just to fill out the ISIS form. Um, in that case, I'm in trouble. But um, there was one student, never came to class, zero. Um, now, this is an interesting number. This is higher than the past. Number of students that came to every single class that the attendance system worked for, um, including the ones at the beginning of the semester. There were six of you. I'm impressed by that. Maybe they're not here today. <laughs> um, all right, so let's look at what happened on the forum, right? So um, you guys were really busy on the forum. You guys posted about 3,000 topics, uh, most of which had several different posts to them. Um, you spent a lot of time reading and, and re absorbing this information. Um, this is for students, right? I'm going to show you the numbers for staff. So keep in mind, you know, there's like 700 students in the class and about 70 course staff. So there's like a 10 to 1 ratio between students and course staff. Um, you guys were appreciative when you got help, which is really nice. Um, let's look at what the staff did on the forum, right? So, if I can do this. So, the staff, so you guys, you know, the staff spent almost as much time entering and, and responding to topics as you did, despite the fact there's about 10 times fewer of them, right? So, this is a major way that the staff was involved in helping you guys throughout the semester, as you know. Um, and, you know, they were, you know, trying to, we try to have staff that are supportive of what you guys are doing in the class. Okay, so let's look at the, what happened on the machine project, all right? So, at the end of the day, we graded over 22,000 commits um, that were contained in about 14,000 pushes or submissions. Um, you guys working on your own ran the local auto grader about 40,000 times and ran about, you know, 172,000 test suites. 
um, of this. So this is a number that we're gonna look at again later, right? So of all the test cases that you guys looked at, how many were red and how many were green, right? Well, about, you know, 60% of them failed, right? So there's a lot of failure that's involved in the process of building things. So I think Ben brought that up on Monday, and I hope that you guys don't, you know, one of the things, if there's, if there's anything that you take away from this class as you go forward, other than some of the skills and knowledge you've acquired, I hope it's that failure does not mean that you are not good at this. Failure is part of the process. Failure is something that I experienced, something that Ben experienced, is something that people experience throughout their lives, you know, in computer science. It never goes away. You get better at dealing with it, you get more confident that you're gonna get through it, but it doesn't stop. You know, it's always gonna be with you. Um, you guys, now this number is, so I'm sure someone is gonna look up the numbers from last year and they're gonna say, this number is way bigger, right? It's like five times larger, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, the machine project was so terrible, you guys made it way too hard. So this includes patches. And I think that's why that number is so big. We'll have to figure out how to get the patch numbers out of it. This number is not that different from, from last time the amount of time you guys spent, you know, that we've calculated, and there's a lot of assumptions that go into this number, working, you know, actively working in Android Studio. Okay, so, now, now here are some of my favorite numbers. So I've already told the, st the, the story about the quantity versus quality, the, the ceramics class, right? So I can't tell that story again, but if you remember, go back to that, you know, being graded on the weight of all your pots versus your best pot. So this is a course that encourages you to do work, to work consistently, and to get a little bit done each day. The homework and the exam programming problems are really, I think, what embodies that most strongly. All right, so you guys saw 167 of them. Um, we maintain about 9,000 lines of testing code. Um, you guys put in over 30,000 hours of work on the homework, and that included 6,000 on the ungraded practice problems that you were just doing to get more practice and to prepare for the quiz. So you guys made about 800,000 submissions to the auto grader. So I, you know, I, you know, I know it doesn't work perfectly, but given the amount of load that we create for Prairie Learn, I think it's safe to say that the system works pretty well, actually, given that over the course of the semester, you guys, you know, put 800,000 submissions through the, their grading system. Um, and those submissions contained like 15 million lines of, of non-commenting code, not blank, stuff that actually did stuff. So what does that work out to per student? So each one of you wrote about 21,000 lines of code this semester, on average, right? Probably some more, some less. Um, oh, and this is also one of my favorite slides. So let's, let, so the 800,000 submissions, how do those break down? What happened to them? All right, so 133,000 of them uh, caused check style errors. Right, so hopefully you guys have learned that uh, by now and how to just, and even internalize the, the correct formatting or a correct formatting to write code in so you don't have to think about it as much. Uh, you guys fought with the compiler, that's pretty normal, about 275,000 compiler errors, and uh, you know, a, a relatively equal number of testing errors, right, uh, that were resulted. Um, and that left about 130,000 correct submissions. Now remember we had those perfection points on some of the problems, right? Um, about 24,000 of those uh, submissions that we got. And of course, not every submission had a, a grading component for this, but that's how many pieces of perfect code you guys wrote, right? Um, so, and I think there's, there, sorry, there's, a, there's something missing from this slide, which is that if you work this out, that means for every correct submission, you had to fail five times. So when I was a kid and I didn't want to eat something, my mom would be like, we well, have to try it 13 times. It's a totally made up number. Right? So it's like, and it's like, who's gonna keep track of how many times they've tried Brussels sprouts? It's like, well, I've got my little calendar here. It's silly, right? But we have data on this, right? If you wanna actually write a piece of working code, it takes five iterations before you're gonna get it right. And this is for small stuff. Imagine how many times you have to build a big piece of software before you get it correct, okay? All right. So, you know, one of the things I, I was thinking about sort of, you know, metaphors for, for the class. And I was also thinking about some unique aspects of this course that I think that you might guys want, want to think about going forward that aren't present in every class. So are there any runners here? Anybody run time to time? So there was, a, there was a big event in running that happened this semester. Does anyone know what it was? 
Yeah. So Elliot Kipchoge broke the two-hour marathon barrier. No one had ever run a marathon under two hours. Elliot Kipchoge uh, broke that and, and ran the first sub-two-hour marathon. So this is a massive accomplishment. Does anyone know how he did it? His shoes, yeah, someone's claiming his shoes. I don't think it was his shoes. Uh, the, the, his, his record is actually not certified, not because of the shoes, for another reason. How did he run that fast? Yeah. He had pacers. So he had, he had people that didn't run the whole way with him, but they ran alongside him. They, they rotated. He had a team of like 20 other elite runners. Keep in mind, this guy's running like four, he's running every mile faster than I can run a single mile. He's running every mile faster than I can run like half a mile, right? Um, so he had a team of elite racers that rotated in and out that paced him the entire way. And that's something that we really try to do in this class. That's why we do daily homework. That's why we have a quiz every week. That's why, you know, we had you work on the machine project and these checkpoints rather than all at once, right? We really try to pace you in this class. And I think that helps you achieve, you know, something special. When you go on, that's up to you, right? You're not gonna have necessarily the same sort of support system you have in this class, but I hope that you guys will still uh, take some of that same approach as you go on to other courses. All right, so. I wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to talk about this number because this course, you know, gets a fair amount of flack from various people. It's too hard, you know, it's not beginner friendly or whatever. Um, and one of our goals, you know, is a course like this easier for people that have prior programming experience? Yes, of course it is. If you know French and you take a beginning French course, it's easier for you than someone who doesn't know French. That's just how courses work, right? But part of our goal here is to narrow the gap, right? You know, we can't make it go away, and that's, uh, making it go away is impossible, right? If someone has 10 years prior programming experience and you have none, they know more than you. At least they did in August. But how close can we get the gap? Because we want that gap to go away. And if you talk to my colleagues, they'll say, by the time students in the program get to sophomore year, get to junior year, that gap is gone, all right? So how much progress did we make this semester? So the most experienced students, this is based on the feedback survey that you guys completed at the beginning of the semester. Median grade for the group of fives, okay? These people were very confident about their abilities. Current median grade is 87. Keep in mind this is out of 90, right? Because we haven't graded the project yet, okay? Critting mean grade for the students that rated themselves as the least experienced, 82. Five points, I'll take it. I think that's okay, right? So that's the gap, right? Between the people that knew nothing on the first day where they walked in and the people that had been doing this for a while, right? And I think most of all, that's a testament to, first of all, the beginners for working their butts off all semester and for the more experienced people for being so helpful and supportive, right? That's one of the things we try to do here. Okay. Um, oh, I wanted to come back to this because I promised we would look at this and I wanted to make sure that you knew that we did look at this. So the split deadline, did that create a big difference in scores? No, it didn't. Uh, one point on the MPs between the blue team and the orange team. So we're not gonna do anything about that. That's well within my margin of error. We're gonna leave that how it is, right? I just, again, I just wanna be transparent about this. Think, you know, some of you just r rightly so complain that office hours got crowded around the deadline. Imagine how bad it would have been had we not had this approach, right? I was talking with Ben, I was like, oh, we got away with that this semester, so this helped. We're gonna keep doing this, but I just wanted to point out this did not confer a major advantage on the orange team. We didn't do that much well in the end. Okay, so now what? What do you go on and, and do next? So there are downstream courses that many of you will take. Um, if, you, if you are one of the people that can enroll in CS126, it's a great class. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you feel well prepared for it. Um, if you can't, so many of you will not be able to enroll in CS126 because you're not a CS or CS plus X major. You guys, if you wanna go on, and many of you do wanna go on, and I wanna support you in that, but here's the thing. You are at a disadvantage because you don't get to take 126. You have to do something next semester, next spring, okay? Because the problem is, here's what happens. A lot of you that are planning on trying to transfer or do a major or just want to continue to grow your interest in computer science are pretty interested in taking CS225. It's a great course. 
CS225 is taught in C++. You know Java, and maybe you know some Python or something else from, from outside. So if, if you don't do any programming starting now, or maybe starting tomorrow after you finish your FAIR project or whatever, and you try to walk into 225 in August 2020, having taken nine months off from programming, it will not go well. I promise. This is a bad idea, all right? So don't do that, okay? And I have a couple of options for you if you don't want to do that. So, so one of them is that next semester I'm going to offer a one credit hour course on Kotlin programming. Right? Um, Kotlin is a beautiful language. It's a different language. It's not Java. Um, it compiles to the same type of intermediate representation that Java compiles to, but it's a totally different language. It's a really fun language to learn and to use. My, if you talk to Max, Ben, you know, some of the students that have been doing development with me, they love it. They really enjoy working in it. Um, the course I'm teaching will essentially be 125, only the homework. So imagine you just had to do the homework for 125, we'll do like a homework problem a day, it'll roughly follow along with the trajectory of 125, there's a couple of meetings every week where we're kind of go over basic topics in Kotlin, but, but, I, but I think it will be a lot of fun, right? And Kotlin is a cool language. So um, we've started to add support for Kotlin to our playground. I don't know if this will work, ah, there it goes, right? So there's Kotlin, right? Um, one of the things that's nice about Kotlin is that is, uh, Ben likes to put it, there's a lot less ceremony than Java, so I can do the following. Remember how we had to create, you know, a person class before in Java that took, um, you know, lines and lines and lines of code? So in Kotlin, here is my person class. That's it. That's all I have to write. So Kotlin, you know, again, I'm, I'm not gonna play with this too much because I'm not sure how well it's gonna work, and I did get it to print Hello World, so I'm gonna quote while I'm ahead. But, um, but Kotlin, this is something we will use next semester, it will work, Kotlin's a really, really fun language. Uh, if you want a way just to kind of keep your programming skills uh, up to date, uh, please join the class. Uh, will it compile? Ah, look at that. I can still write Kotlin. Another thing you can do to keep yourself fresh is to join our course staff. So many of you have already applied to be a CA. If you haven't yet, give it some thought. It's a great way to keep yourself prepared, keep yourself in the loop. Helping other people is a great way to learn how to write code. You get to see a lot of other people's code, which is a really good learning experience. So please do that. Um, we're always looking for volunteers, and next semester we're gonna ha have, I think, even more an of an effective program for training people to be good course staff. All right, so now I get to do something fun. Uh, right before we do the, this will be a little bit faster than usual because I do wanna give you guys, uh, you know, 20 minutes to do the ISIS forms. All right. So this is an award that we give every um, semester. Normally we would do this kind of at the project fair presentation, but there's not gonna be one because it's tomorrow. Um, so there are three categories, right, um, that we give this award to. The award is, other than the recognition you're about to get, is a, um, I, 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 I like this, I like this gift. It is a mechanical keyboard. A code mechanical keyboard. Yeah, these things are awesome. I have two of them, one at home, one at work. Um, these are nice, They're, and it's a good gift, I think, for to further your career in computer science. All right, so the community award is really picked by the course staff, and they talked about this yesterday, um, and there were a lot of names that were mentioned, okay? I'm not gonna try to get a subset of them, but there were a number of you that were very, very helpful on the forum, answering questions, helping other people out. Uh, but there was a name that came up multiple times, um, and particularly was recognized by Ben as someone who he thought was both uniquely helpful and very, very positive, which is something that we really enjoy. Um, Lou Zay, where are you? Is she here? On the balcony? There she is, all right, come on up. All right, you guys can come up and, and stand at the edge of the stage or something like that. I'll get all three of you up here. Okay, so the next award is very easy to pick. It's the practice award. It goes to the person that spent the most time on Prairie Learn doing the homework 125 problem set. I mean, that seems appropriate, right? This is, the, this is someone who has spent 
I won't embarrass them by telling you how much time, a lot of time, uh, and very time well spent practicing our programming problems. Jessica Wang, where are you? Is she here? Jessica Wang. Maybe she's at home. That's you? Come on up. All right, congratulations. <laughs> All right, so, so the, the, the last award is given to someone who, um, you know, the, me, particularly me and the core staff feel, have watched sort of like work through some, um, some struggles this semester, someone for whom this didn't come all that easily, someone that had to work at it, um, someone who, you know, got frustrated at times, kind of worked through some of those frustrations and, and maintained a really positive attitude throughout the, uh, along the way. Uh, Sarah Shaw, I think she's upstairs. Yeah. Sarah, wave your hand so people can see her. Yeah, congratulations. All right, I will be in touch with you guys about, you guys can come in. I, I've got a little switch tester. You guys can pick out your keys and stuff like that. Fun process. Thanks. Thanks to all of these students for their fantastic work this semester. Okay. I'm not going to say too much about this because I'm running out of time, but, um, so I read these. That's all I'll say. I read these and we respond to them. Let me give you a couple of examples quickly. Um, oh, something else we're gonna do. So after you fill these out right now, here's the problem with ISIS. I don't get these back until like March, okay? I would like to try to fix them. We tried some new things this semester. I'd like to try to fix those things for next semester or at least make a, you know, do, do what we can over the short break, right? So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna send you an email today with the link to an online ISIS, it's exactly the same thing. It's anonymous. It does not collect your email address. It's the same questions on the ISIS form, but we'll get the responses a lot faster. And you can type. So you can type whatever you want. Um, so please do that and do the paper forms, right? The paper forms I will read and someone else will see, you know, the, the, the things you put in the little numbers. Um, and the online forms we'll be able to use to, to make changes for next semester. Oh, right. Okay. So this is really important too. Whoever designed these forms does not get um, an A for good form design. So maybe people have already pointed this out to you, but these two, the two boxes that people will look at the hardest are both together on one line. And they're at the very top, so don't miss them. There, there was a couple of semesters I've seen people fill out these forms that didn't seem to see that those were there. Okay, so quick. Um, Couple of stories about how we've used ISIS feedback. So the homework problems that you guys are worked on this semester, those we wrote because people wrote on the ISIS forms, we like doing these sort of small practice problems, can you write more of them? So we did, okay? Last spring, we redesigned all of the labs because people kept complaining on the ISIS forms, we don't like the labs, we'd like you to try to do something different. So that's what we did. We might do that again next semester, actually. Um, for fall, part of where the idea from the machine project came was that people were pointing out that they were doing these small disjointed projects and it didn't give them a lot of experience building, working on a larger project, right? So every semester we've responded to feedback. Some of the things you guys write, you know, aren't, aren't things that we can fix or are too difficult or are actually features of the class that you guys are interpreting as bugs. Um, but we do take the feedback seriously and we have a track record of responding to it. Okay. So, I need some help with this because I have to leave. Um, so I need a couple of responsible students um, to help distribute the forms and someone needs to volunteer to take them back to Siebel. I have a shopping bag for you. There's a lot of them. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, why don't you guys start, I'm gonna put these, well, you know what? I need to leave before we do this. So I'm gonna put these at the front of the stage. I've got announcements up right now, so like I said, the project fair is tomorrow. Um, if you guys have any grading concerns, let's get to them uh, as soon as we can. I'm gonna, I don't think we're gonna need all of these, but I'll put them all out. Any questions before I vanish? Any questions? Any? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I apologize. Last time we did this, we had a little bit more time. We did the awards separately, so we had more time to do a little bit of, of a discussion about how the class went and got some useful feedback that way. But please fill out the ISIS forms, fill out the online ISIS forms. 
Can someone from the balcony come down and get these, or you guys can just come down and do them by the stage? Um, I'm gonna put on a little bit of music and pack up. Um, I will say that it has been, as always, a real pleasure uh, teaching this class this semester. I really enjoy it. Um, you know, you guys are what makes it a lot of fun. I hope that a lot of you will come back and help us teach the class next semester and try to make it better. So good luck with whatever you guys do next. I will look forward to seeing you around. <laughs>